Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Have you ever been in an examination room and seen something like this? Well, have no fear. Today we're going to make this complex structure seems to be something like this. Now today's topic will be on the circulatory system. Now first I want you to note that the circulatory system pretty much involves three main structures which is the heart, the blood and blood vessels. Now first also I wanted to note is that the heart is made up of four chambers. So there are four chambers of the heart. And the, the chambers are described in terms of upper and lower. Okay, so the upper chambers, they are called atria, atrium for singular. And the lower ones, they are called the ventricles, ventricle for singular. Now, and just a point to note is that the upper chambers and the lower chambers are separated by what we call valves. So there's a valve right here and there's a valve right here. We'll look at that little, a little bit after this. So there are valves that separate the upper from the lower. But you need to know the upper, they are called atria. The lower, they are called ventricles. Now the heart is also divided into two sides, which you have the right side and the left side. So the right side, um, easy to remember it, is that it goes based on your hand. So easy way to do it is raise your left hand. So your left hand will point to the right side of the heart. And if you raise your right hand, it points to the left side of the heart. And so the, the left and the right is separated by a muscle in the middle. And that muscle in the middle is called the septum. So that muscle in the middle will call the septum. So the upper and lower are separated by what are called valves. And the right and the left is separated by what you call the septum. Now, I wanted you also to note is that inside of the heart, Blood will enter the heart through the atria. Blood enter the heart through the atria. So notice it. Only the upper chambers are receiving blood. And blood will leave the heart through the ventricles. So only the lower chambers that will be responsible to push blood out of the heart. So when these muscles of the lower chambers contract, blood will flow outside of the heart. All right. Now we're going to make the entire circulatory system be so easy. Now I want you to look at this representation right here. And as simple as just to remember is have, love, be. So have, love, be. And this mnemonics is going to make us understand it entire circulatory system so right in front of you simple acronym of love b going to let you understand the entire circulatory system so what you're viewing here is the entire circulatory system made easy so once you see a it means atrium v ventricle l for lungs and b for body so let's put it together now now, let's start from the body. So, you can say blood is flowing from the body into the atrium. But what atrium is this? Do you remember? Raise your hand. What hand are you raising on this side? Your left hand. So, this will be our right side. And this actually going to be our what? Left side. So, we can say now that blood flows from the body into the right atrium then into the right ventricle then into the lungs and from the lungs it goes back to the heart which is the left atrium then it goes into the left ventricle and back to the body so the entire circulation of blood made easy now let's apply this now to our like a simple structure 
And so again, remember our right side and our left side. So this side will be our right side. This side will be our what? Left side. So blood comes from the body. So blood is coming from the body. And blood flows from the body into the right atrium, then into the right ventricle, and back to the lungs. And remember that the upper and the lower chambers are separated by what? Valves. Awesome. And then when it goes to the lungs, it will come back from the lungs into the left atrium, then into the left ventricle, then back to the body. So notice the Av, Lav, B works. Now, I also wanted to note right here is that very important point to note right here is that arteries take blood away from the heart. So A, away. Arteries, away from the heart. And vein will bring blood back to the heart. Okay, so A, away. So just now remember that these upper chambers are receiving blood. So blood flow to the heart into the upper chambers and so the blood vessels that are carrying blood into the upper chambers they are examples of veins now since this is coming from the body it is known as the vena cava which is the biggest vein in the body and this is coming from the lungs which is pulmonary so once you see lungs is associated with the word pulmonary and so this is the pulmonary vein. So once you see connect to the left atrium, it is a pulmonary vein. And then the, the bottom chambers are pushing blood out. So taking blood away from the heart. And they are examples of arteries. Now this one on the right side of the heart, which is the pulmonary artery, taking blood towards the lungs. And on the left side, it is the aorta taking blood towards the body. So this is known as the largest artery in the body. Now, this is what I also wanted to note is that on the right side of the heart, if you remember your left hand, you could raise the left hand. So on the right side of the heart, we have what they call deoxygenated blood. And on the left side, we have what they call oxygenated blood so let's take a minute to watch to look at the difference now deoxygenated blood means that it's very low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide why is this happening because when blood is coming from the body the body already uses up the oxygen to carry this function such as respiration so what is coming back to the heart will be very low in oxygen and it goes towards the lungs to be reoxygenated and so when it coming from the lungs on this left side it will be now oxygenated which means it's rich in oxygen and lower in carbon dioxide because the lungs would have already taken out the carbon dioxide or much of the carbon dioxide and deposit oxygen in the blood and it will now send towards the body for the body now to use the oxygen for respiration. All right, a point to note right here as well is that the heart is described as what they call a double pump. Why is it called a double pump? Is one thing that is pumping. The heart is pumping blood, right? It's the pump blood around the body. So why is it called a double pump? It's simple because it has two different sides and the blood on one side do not mix on the other side. So it simply means this is pumping blood in one way. Notice blood entering and leaving. Blood entering and leaving. So the deoxygenated blood. So to explain the double pump, you're simply going to explain that the heart is pumping, is pumping deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood without them being mixed. So they pump these two blood, these two types of blood at the same time without being mixed. So it is a it is a no it is known as a double pump now let's put this all together now so let's go through this and put it all together now remember i already labeled the veins and the arches for you so remember now blood only entered the upper chambers okay so you go in the exam see this complex diagram now it made easy 
remember this side here is the right side raise your hand you will see it okay and this side over this side will be your what left side raise your hand and you'll see that now blood will come in through this blood vessel from the body notice vena cava say so coming from the body through the vena cava it deposit into this top chamber which is known as the right atrium it will come through this valve and then goes into the lower chamber which is known as the right ventricle and this side is right side then it will leave this chamber and go into the pulmonary artery and notice the word pulmonary associated with lungs so this one is going towards the lungs and then coming back from the lungs it will deposit into the other side of the heart so coming from the lungs through the pulmonary vein because towards the heart is a vein so it's a pulmonary vein and it comes to the pulmonary vein and deposit into this upper chamber of the left side so that's the left atrium comes through this valve and enter the lower chambers chamber right here which is known as the left ventricle goes through this valve all right and go into this big blood vessel right here the biggest artery of the body which is called the aorta and so that is the flow of blood through the heart now one more thing i want to point out um, right here is that if you notice you have some valves okay and the purpose for valves in the heart and blood vessels in fact the vein is the only blood vessel that will contain valves so the purpose for valves is simply to prevent the backflow of blood or allow blood to flow in one direction so blood can only go one way through the valves okay now let's kind of name these valves this valve on this side which is on the right side is called the tricuspid valve while this large valve on the on the left side of the heart is called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve these two valves right here in the middle i want you to kind of notice something here when i'm look at so this one here is in the pulmonary artery and so it's in a pulmonary blood vessel and this valve right here is in the aorta so the names are associated with the names of these blood vessels so this one in the pulmonary artery is called the pulmonary valve while this one in the pulm in the aorta is called the aortic valve now a point to note is that these two blood vessels right these two valves right here all right so these two blood vessels that contain the valves right here these two valves are also called collectively the semi lunar valve so the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve together they are called the semi lunar valve all right so you have the tricuspid the bicuspid or mitral valve semi lunar valve right there all right so just take a minute pause the video try to see if you could trace the flow of blood through this heart and also the label awesome job you just finished that now we're going to finish up with the types of circulation now blood is flowing all over your body but they go towards different place or different organs and hence we describe them based on how blood is flowing so there are three main types of circulation in the body so it so one we call it the pulmonary circulation and remember what to talk about pulmonary is once in the word pulmonary it associated with the lungs so blood is flowing from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart or you can say deoxygenated blood flows from the heart into the lungs and oxygenated blood flows from the lungs back into the heart so if you notice it on this what side is it again awesome this side will be our right side so deoxygenated blood flows from the right of the heart into the lungs and then back into the heart so notice the atrium is receiving the blood the ventricle is pushing the blood out all right and the second one is known as the systemic circulation 
easy way to remember it remember the entire system of the body the body is an entire system so think about it in that way that um, blood is flowing from the heart into the body and back to the heart so if you notice right here um, blood deoxygenated blood flows from the body so this is deoxygenated blood flowing from the body into the heart and notice the side that is going to the side that is painted in blue for deoxygenated and what and it leaves this side of the heart which is oxygenated and goes into the body so blood flows from the heart to the body back to the heart and the last type of circulation we're going to look right here is the coronary circulation so coronary circulation is that the blood is flowing from the chambers of the heart to the muscles of the heart now why is this important now blood flows to the heart simple because the heart muscles contain blood they contain cells and tissues now the heart is also a working organ and it requires oxygen and glucose to carry the process of res of respiration so it will it can have enough energy so once it has enough energy to carry its function without blood going to the to the muscles of the heart the blood the heart will be deprived of oxygen and glucose and hence will not able to function properly because of, of a deprivation of energy and so now we understand that blood the heart also requires blood and now we are at the end of the lesson and if you want to continue learning science just please hit the subscription button see you in the next lesson